Shalom Israel, Shalom. This is Brother Benaiah. Just wanted to do another breakdown on the laws of the Mosai. This one's going to be titled The Laws of God Still Stand, The Key to Perfection. The laws of the Mosai still stand and they are the key to perfection. First and foremost, I want to give all honor and all glory to the Mosai God, Yahweh, Bahashim Hamashiach Yahushai. I'm giving all honor and all glory to the Most High God, whose real name is Yahweh, and His only begotten Son's name, whose name is Yahweh Shai, the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Now, I wanted to go into this to show that the laws of the Most High still stand, right? And th they are really the key to perfection. Okay, um, so we're gonna we're gonna go through it. So this is uh, first preset. I wanna go to John. <coughs> Excuse me. This is the book of John, chapter 7 and verse 49. John 7 and 49, and it reads, But this people who knoweth not the law are cursed. So if you don't know the laws of the Most High, ultimately you're cursed. You're basically cursed because you won't be doing any of the laws, and that's the only thing that's going to get you destroyed. Right? Let's go to Proverbs. This is the book of Proverbs. Chapter 28, I'm going to go verse 4 first. Proverbs 28 verse 4, it says, They that forsake the law praise the wicked, but such as keep the law contend with them. That's why us as Hebrew Israelites, we're contending with the so-called Christians. A lot of them are our brothers, but we, we have to contend with them because we have to stand for the truth. The laws of the Most High are the truth, right? That's you find that in Psalms. The laws of God, that's the truth. And that still stands till this day. We've been blinded by the Christian church, by Christianity, to tell us that the law is done away with. That's the, that's the biggest lie for centuries. They've covered it very well. But the Mosai said in Daniel, in the end days, knowledge shall be increased. But this is what you're seeing now, knowledge increasing. Now we know who we are. We're not black, right? We're not Ivorians. We're not Nigerians. We're the Hebrew Israelites. We're Israelites, right? Just like Paul was, just like the more, just like Christ was. Okay, let's go to Proverbs twenty-eight and verse nine. Proverbs twenty-eight and nine, it says, "He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination." So if you turn your ears from hearing the laws of the Most High, even your prayer is an abomination. The Most High ain't hearing that. If anything, he hates that. The Mosai hates abominations. If you don't want to hear, you're not supposed to be going to church on Sunday. You're supposed to keep the Sabbath. If you don't want to hear, you're not supposed to be eating shrimp, crabs, lobster, right, pork. If you don't want to hear, you don't, you have to wear your fringes. If you don't want to hear, you can't cut your beard. You can't shave your beard off or shave your hair bald. If you don't want to hear, um, what else Jake is is into? If you don't want to, you don't want to. You're not, you're not supposed to be fornicating with women, right? You're not supposed to be sleeping with multiple women. As soon as you lay down with a woman, that's your wife. If you don't want to hear, you're not supposed to be sleeping with multiple men. If you don't want to hear none of those things, your prayer are an abomination to the Most High. That's thus saith the Bible. All right. Let's go to First Peter. It's the book of First Peter, chapter three, and verse number twelve. It says, for the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. He said, the, the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. How do we become righteous? Can we find anyone in the Bible who is righteous? Let's see. This is Luke chapter 1 and verse 5. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elishabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. So you're righteous when you walk in the commandments of the Lord. That's how you become righteous, by obeying the Mosai's commandments. 
Let's go to Deuteronomy. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, and verse number 25. It says, And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he have commanded us. It shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments. So you become righteous when you observe to do all these commandments. Right? David was a righteous man. Although he sinned, he was perfect. See, the Mosai's, the Mosai's definition of perfect, God's definition of perfect, is different from man's definition of perfect. Right? To us, perfection means oh, you've never, never did anything wrong, and you know you're always good because that that's that's not that's not attainable. There's no man who's never done anything wrong, apart from Christ. Right, so perfection does not mean you don't go off. But we're gonna find out what true perfection is, right? Let's go to First Kings. Let's go to First Kings. I want chapter eleven. And verse number four, it says, for, for it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God as was the heart of David his father. So David had a perfect heart according to the Bible. David had a perfect heart. The same David who committed adultery and killed Uri the Hittite and took his wife. Right? That's the same David. He had a perfect heart. This is First Kings chapter 15. And I want verse 3. It says, And he walked in all the sins of his father, which he had done before him. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as the heart of David his father. Verse 4. Nevertheless, for David's sake, did the Lord his God give him a lamp in Jerusalem to set up his son after him and to establish Jerusalem? Verse 5, Because David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord and turned not aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, save only in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. So the only time David was imperfect was when he was the matter between um, him and Uriah the Hittite, when he killed Uriah the Hittite and took his wife, and that's how he had he had Solomon. But David went through hell when he was on earth, after the things that he done. His first son died, then he had Solomon, and he was constantly being chased. He was constantly being hunted down. David went through hell. For a king, you're supposed to be enjoying your lifestyle. You're a king. David did, was not that type of king because of what he did. He killed so many men. He killed ten thousands of men. That's why Saul was jealous of him. Right? So he not only was he a warrior, he committed adultery, but then he repented. But then the Mosai still was still chast chastising him, judging him his whole life. So David went through hell. But guess what? He was perfect nonetheless. That's according to the Mosai. Let's go to John. This is John. John chapter 9 and verse 31. It says, Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshipper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. We know God doesn't hear sinners. So if you're dwelling in your sin, not saying you can't go off, because we all go off. There's nothing wrong with going off. But there is something wrong with going off if you're staying in that sin. But the whole point of Christ is so that we got we got grace. So you go off, you repent, you don't go back to that sin again. And you move on. Right? Because of Christ, we're able to be forgiven for our sins. That's the whole point of Christ dying. Right? I'm going to read that again. It says, Now we know that God heareth not sinners, the people who dwell in their sins, the people who don't want to hear the laws, the people who don't want to change, the most I ain't hearing you. But if any man be a worshipper of God and doeth his will, 
him he heareth. So any man who does the will of the Mosai, the Mosai is going to hear him. So what is the will of the Mosai? What is God's will? Let's find out. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 40, and verse number 8. It says, I delight to do thy will, O God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. This is David talking. Right? David went through hell. He wrote a lot of the Psalms. Right? I'm going to read that again. Psalms 40 and 8. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. So the will of the Most High is his laws. Where do you find the laws? In the first five books of the Bible. In the books that the church is telling you is done away with. Don't look into it. Just look at the New Testament. Right? We've been lied to our whole lives. But times, like Daniel said, um, knowledge shall be increasing in the last days. This is what you're seeing right now, knowledge increasing. Right? I, I didn't know I would, I would come to this understanding. I didn't know if you told me this two, three years ago that you'd be, you know, in this Bible. You'd be learning it every day. You'd be on fire for the most high. You'd be on fire to want to teach your people. I'll tell you, get out, get out of here, man. I want to go out and party. That's what I tell you. I want to go out and get drunk. Right? But all praises to the Most High for showing me life, for showing me the truth. Right? Because David was always on the run. David was always on the run because of his transgression. Uriah the Hittite. That's why he wrote a lot of these Psalms. If you read, we're going to go through a lot of these Psalms. This is what, this is what David was writing after the things that he did, right? That's why he was perfect, because he repented and he was constantly after the, after the Lord's heart. He was constantly, you know, asking for forgiveness. The Mosai put all of these for our learning, for us to learn from these things and grow, right? Let's go to Psalm 119. Let's read out some of the things that David wrote. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 119. In verse 71, it reads, It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy, statute, thy statutes. The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. Excuse me. I'm going to read that again. Psalm 119, and I'm going to start at 70. It says, Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in thy law. Verse 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. So David loved the law of the Most High. Right? Let's go to this. Let's read another one. Let's go to Psalm 59. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 59. In verse number one, it says, Deliver me from mine enemies, O my God. Defend me from them that rise up against me. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity and save me from the bloody men. For lo, they lie in wait for my soul. The mighty are gathered against me, not for my transgression, not for my sin, nor for my sin, O Lord. So David was going through hell. He was constantly being hunted down. And that's that's because of the transgression that he, that he did. The Mosai still deemed him perfect. But the Mosai put him through hell. Right? So every action has got a consequence of it. But that doesn't mean you can't be perfect in the eyes of the Lord. You just have to repent and keep going. And keep trying to do the best. You're trying to keep, keep trying to keep the commandments of the Lord. That's the end goal. And have faith in his son. Right, let's go to the Psalms, Psalms 32. Let's go to another one, Psalms 32 and verse number 5. It says, I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Right? So when you, you confess your transgression unto the Most High, He will forgive you, He is merciful. You confess. 
You acknowledge what you're doing wrong. You try and move away from it. You don't you go back to it. The Messiah will forgive you. Right? Let's go to Psalms 25. Psalms 25 and verse number 2. It says, Oh my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Those that wait unto the Lord will never be ashamed. Right? Because we're, we're after Lord's heart. We're after, we're after, you know, making the Most High happy. We love the Most High that we, we want to keep His commandments. Because that's what love is. Let's prove that. You cannot tell me you love the Most High. You love God, this and that. And you're not keeping His commandments. And you're not trying to keep His commandments. You're a liar. That's according to the Bible. All these Christians... All these Christian pastors, people that love going to church, they're all liars. Because the Bible tells you what love is. They'll tell you they love God. But ask them what does love mean to God. This is what love is according to God. This is 1 John chapter 5 and verse number 3. It says, For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. The commandments of the Lord are not grievous. That's the love of God. Us keeping with his commandments. And they are not grievous. Listen to this. This is 1 John chapter 2 and verse 3. And hereby we do know that we know him. How do we know that we know God? If we keep his commandments. Verse 4. He that saith I know him, like the Christian church, like all my all some a lot of our brothers who are still in the Christian church. They say they know God. I want to have a relationship with God. Well, what does the Bible say? It says, He that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. There's a lot of liars in these Christian churches because they'll tell you they know God. They'll tell you they love God. But God said, If you love me, keep my commandments. If you say you know me and you're not keeping my commandments, you're a liar. The truth is not in you. Let's go back to Psalms. Psalms 119 and verse 60. This is the book of Psalms chapter 119 and verse 60. It says, I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. So we're rushing to keep the commandments of the Lord. Right? We're making haste to keep the commandments of the Lord. We're not delaying. Okay? Now, a lot of people will say, you know, well, all have sinned and you know, we've all sinned and, and fell, fallen short of the glory of God. Yeah, that's true. Let's go to that quickly. This is Romans 3, and I believe it's verse 23. Yeah, Romans 3 and 23. It says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's right. We've all sinned. Past tense. Everybody has sinned apart from Christ. Right? And fall short, fall short of, the, of the glory of God. But does that mean we stay in our sin? Does that mean we keep sinning? No. Because. Let's go to. Let me not speak my own words. This is uh, Romans 6. And I'm going to start at 14. It says. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law. But under grace. What then? Shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace, God forbid. Just because we are under the, we're no longer under the law and we're under grace, doesn't mean we keep sinning. And what is sin? Let's read what is sin. And then we're going to come back to, to Romans. Because Christians, you ask them what is sin, they'll tell you, well, it's missing the mark. Or is when you, when you do something that's not right. Well, what is it really? Let's get straight to it. There's a definition of sin. The Bible tells you what it is. Stop uh, tiptoeing around the question. This is First John, chapter three. Come. This is First John, chapter three, and verse number four. It says, "Whosoever committeth sin, transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law." So sin is when you break God's law. When you break God's law, you're in sin. So how do we stop sinning? 
we stop breaking God's laws and we start to keep his laws. We keep his commandments. That's how, that's how you become righteous. That's how you become perf perfect. Not saying you don't ever sin. Because I've sinned. 100%. I was wicked. But I'm working towards perfection right now. Because I'm keeping God's laws. And I'm teaching my brothers to do the same. And sisters. And my family. My wife. My child. You know? Let's go back to Romans. So I want Romans 6 and 4. And I read 14, 15. Romans 6 and 16. It says, Know ye not that to whom ye yield servants unto, you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So whoever you're, you're, you're giving your time to, you're giving your thoughts to, that's who your master is. That's who your God is. So if you're dwelling in your sin, your God is sin. Your God is Satan. So you will be put to death. But if you're giving your thoughts and your actions into righteousness, which we read earlier in Luke 1 and 6, which is walking in the, in the laws of the Mosai, keeping his commandments, the Mosai will be merciful. The Mosai will save you. And Mosai will, you will inherit the kingdom. That's the, whole, that's the whole goal, isn't it? It's not to glory in this lifetime, but to glory in the next. Because this lifetime is only for a short time. The next is eternal. So we don't want the glory here. We want the glory in the next. That's what I want for my family. Right? Let's go to 2 Corinthians. Okay. Let's go to the book of 2 Corinthians. Chapter 5. And verse 20. 2 Corinthians 5 and 20. It says... Now then, we are ambassadors of Christ, as though God did besiege you. By us, we pray you, in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So because of Christ, we're able to become righteous. We're able to sin, repent, and then keep the commandments and be righteous. Christ gave us that opportunity. Now, if you know this and you continuously stay in your sin, then there's there's no more there's no more sacrifice for sin. There's no more sacrifice for sin. Right? I believe that's in James. There's no more sacrifice for sin. If you know this. And you stay in your sin. If you know this and you stay in your sin, there's no more sacrifice for sin. Right? Let's go to Baruch. Baruch, which you will find in the 1611. King James, right? 1611 King James, it's got the Apocrypha in it. This is the book of Baruch, chapter 4, and verse number 1. It says, This is the book of the commandments of Yahweh, and the law that endureth forever. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. So if you leave the laws, you will die. If you turn away your ear from hearing the law, you will die. That's thus saith the Lord. That's thus saith the Holy Bible. Right? Let's go to Matthew chapter 19. And I want verse 17. Matthew chapter 19 verse 17. It says, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Someone came to Christ and asked him, Good master, what good thing can I do that I can have eternal life? And see, look what he says. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is God. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me read that again. Matthew 19 and 17. It says, And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good 
but one, and that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, if you want to have eternal life, keep the commandments. You want to enter into life, keep the commandments. The church will tell you to have eternal life, you need to be baptized and be saved. The Bible says to have eternal life, you need to keep the commandments. The church will tell you you need to be baptized and start praying in tongues, which is actually gibberish, which I might do another lesson on that. Speaking in tongues is not speaking a, 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 a gibberish language that nobody can understand. Speaking in tongues is speaking in another language that someone can actually interpret. Right? I'm going to read that again. Matthew 19 and 17. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. If you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. That's what the Mosai is requiring of us. To keep his laws. That's how you show that you love him. Right? Got two more precepts. Let's go to the last book of the Bible. Revelations. Chapter 14 and verse number 12. It says, here is the patience of the saints. Right? Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So the faith of the saints is those that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. The faith of Yahweh Shai. That's, that's the patience of the saints. For them to keep the commandments of God and the faith of Yahweh Shai. Right? Last verse. Let's go to Revelations chapter 22. And verse number 12. It says, Revelation 22 and 12. It says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. This is Christ talking. It's red letter. Behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. According as his work shall be. So the Messiah is given to every man according to their works. What have you done? What commandments have you kept? What people did you bring to the truth? How long did you endure for? Right? How long did you suffer persecution? The Musa is taking, he's got his angels recording everything right now. Right? So Christ is coming back to give to every man according to their works. I'm going to jump down to verse 14. Revelations 22 and 14. It says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Blessed are they that do his commandments. If you're not doing the commandments, you're not blessed. We read earlier, you're cursed. You might think you're blessed because Satan can bless you as well. You might be doing all sorts of wickedness and you're making money from it. Yeah, Satan can do that for you. But if you're deceived, and you think you think because you're making money you're blessed. Good luck. Let's see. Let's see how you get on at the end. Right? I'm gonna read that one more time. This is the last verse. Revelation 22 and verse 14. It says, "Blessed are they that do His commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city." So you're blessed if you do the commandments of the Most High, because at the end of the day, you will enter through that, through the city, through the through the gates, which is the kingdom of heaven, which is eternal. Right? That's all I got for today. I want to give all honor and all glory to the Most High God Yahweh, Bahashem, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, and I want to 